Hello and welcome to UKFitnessHub.com. My name's Travis Tarrant, and in today's video, we're gonna be covering the Quervain's Tenosynovitis. I'm gonna be going through what it is, the causes and symptoms, and what we can do to help you reduce pain. Let's get into the video. So firstly, let's talk a little bit about what the Quervain's tenosynovitis is. Well, simply put, it's when there's swelling and inflammation of the tendon sheath within the wrist. And there are two muscles that we're primarily looking at here, the adductor pollicis longus, and we're also looking at the extensor pollicis brevis. And muscles attach to bone via tendons and the tendons are what get inflamed and sore and give those sensations of pain. The muscles specifically do two things, both of which share the same responsibility, and these are to abduct the thumb and also create radial deviation within the wrist. So specifically, these two movements tend to be movements that cause pain and dysfunction. So what causes De Quervain's tenosynovitis? Well, the most common reason is repetitive strain, and the second reason is introduction to a new activity. So let's cover the first one, and this was the reason I got the Quervain's tenosynovitis around about three to four years ago. So when I qualified as a sports massage therapist, I was doing a job that did not involve my hands at all, and then all of a sudden I went into doing loads and loads of sports massage, and it wasn't the sports massage that caused my De Quervain's tenosynovitis, it was going from doing nothing to doing hours and hours of clients each day, and specifically the loading on my hand went from nothing to all of a sudden up here, so that caused me a repetitive strain injury. I immediately had to stop sports massage, heal the area, let the inflammation come down, and then gradually work back up to it. And of course, I have to do things like thumb and also hand exercises to make sure that the tendons are strong enough to tolerate the load that I want to do with regards clientele. The second reason is new activities. So you'll often see pregnant women that will come in with De Quervain's tenosynovitis as well. This can be for two reasons. Excess water retention can put pressure on the extensor retinaculum, and that can cause these symptoms. And also, introduction to a new activity in the way that they're holding a baby after pregnancy. So that radial deviation of the wrist holding baby up, that can cause De Quervain's tenosynovitis as well. Specifically, just doing a movement and holding the baby in a position that the wrist and hand wouldn't usually have done prior to pregnancy. When clients come into the clinic with the Quervain's tenosynovitis, they'll typically be complaining about two things, pain at the radial side of the wrist and also pain of the thumb. That can be palmar side, also it could be the back of the hand or both. They'll typically be complaining about symptoms such as achiness, soreness, tenderness. They could have pins and needles or numbness. And finally, it could just be weakness of the hand, specifically wrist as well, in radial deviation. A classic one, an example of this, would be someone that comes in and I say, what daily activities are causing you pain? And it might be something, for example, that involves radial deviation and holding that position. For example, taking a cup of coffee off a kitchen countertop, taking the kettle out. Those types of simple, silly things are things that are causing people pain and those are involving radial deviation and then generally a grip as well. What I'll do in clinic is I'm looking to test out those two tendons, so to see if it is those two tendons that are inflamed and if they have probable De Quervain's tenosynovitis. And one of the tests we can do for it is the Finkelstein's test. And simply put, I'll have the hand with the thumb up, and what I'm looking to do is put the thumb to the pinky finger padding. Then I'm gonna grab around the thumb, so I'm really squeezing in right now. And in this position, what I'm squeezing in, if they get pain already, I would then not bring them into the second part of the movement. But if they're fine with this, I'll then bring them into ulnar deviation of the wrist. So bringing that wrist to the floor. This is going to apply pressure onto those tendons. And what I'm looking to do is see if the pressure if somebody doesn't have the Quervain's tenosynovitis, 
they will not get any pain with this. If they do, they'll often feel that sharp pain or whatever they're complaining with be reproduced by doing that Finkelstein's test. So that would give me a good indication that those tendons are not being able to tolerate being stretched and being worked as well. Now, no special test like the Finkelstein's test is a 100% accurate way to diagnose anything, but it gives me a good indication that those tendons are unhappy. So if you believe you have the Quervain's tenosynovitis or you know you've got it, what can we do to try and alleviate some of the symptoms? So when it's inflamed, when it's sore, we need to settle the area down. And that means avoiding the activity that is causing us pain. So for example, in my case, doing too much sports massage, I couldn't have continued doing it. I couldn't have just lowered my sports massage because I'd have continuously been inflaming that area. So I had to stop it entirely, let the inflammation settle down, and then go back to activity slowly once I'd rehabilitated the area. So stopping the activity and modifying daily tasks is always number one. Now, splints are often used. I don't personally use them unless one occasion occurs. So let's say, for example, I get a man or a woman that says, I'm gonna rest my left hand. That's the one with the Quervain's tenosynovitis. However, they just keep forgetting to not use the hand, so they'll pick up something and then they'll get a sharp pain. That's the type of individual that I might advise a splint for, somebody that is trying to rest the hand, but they just keep doing things that flares up the injury. That way, they've got a constant reminder with the splint and they won't be able to use the hand. And it means that, well, they won't be able to make the symptoms any worse. So that's the only case that I would really use a splint. Otherwise, what we can do to calm down the area is use ibuprofen gels on the area. We can also use icing for five minutes, three times per day, so morning, afternoon, and evening. In severe cases, there may be an argument for steroid injections into the area. Uh, typically, it doesn't go this far. And in extreme, extreme cases, there may be an argument for cutting the extensor rec retinaculum of the wrist and therefore freeing up more space in the wrist. But again, that is very extreme. The thing that we would look to do once the area has settled down is start doing gentle mobility exercises, then increasing those to strength exercises. And that's what I'm gonna cover next. Once you've calmed down the area, what you're gonna be looking to do is do mobility exercises for the thumb. And I'm gonna show you three exercises. You do two sets of 15 and listen to your body as well. If you do all these exercises, you wanna start off with just one set to see how it goes and see how the hand responds and the thumb, that's absolutely fine. If you wanna progress it to two, make sure that you're not getting any pain with these first three exercises because they should be pain-free and only work within a pain-free range of motion. So I'm gonna start off with my thumb coming up and back down. Notice how I'm doing the movement really slowly as well. I'm really thinking about lowering under control and I'm gonna do two sets of 15 of thumb extension. I can then do thumb abduction, like so. So I'm bringing my thumb here towards my body and the midline of my body, and then back to its original position. And finally, I'm then gonna bring my thumb to the padding of my pinky finger, stretch out those tendons a little bit, and come back. If again you get pain, you might wanna decrease the range of motion and just work within a pain-free range of motion. And then finally, for the wrist, I want you to start working from ulnar to radial deviation. So I would start off with the hand completely relaxed. I've not got it straight, just absolutely relaxed with the wrist. I'm just gonna come up and back down, up and back down. Almost think of wrist coming up towards the ceiling and back down, it'll be two sets of 15 as well on that one. Once you get to the stage where then it's feeling a little bit better, you can do that. You might wanna then do it with a straight hand, which is gonna be harder. And then you can go on to strength exercises. I'm gonna link these in the description of the video. These are thumb exercise bands. Believe it or not, there's exercise bands for your thumb. I know, crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring all of the fingers wrapped around this one band. And then I'm gonna open up the hand and close the hand. Open up the hand, 
and close the hand. If I get a client that has too much pain with this one, but they've done all the other exercises and they're fine, what I'll typically do is tell them to open up the hand with the good hand and then just hold that position. So hold an isometric contraction. And typically they'll be able to do this before they can start doing this one. So if that one's too hard, open up the hand and just hold that position for 15 seconds and do two sets. Otherwise, if you can do the finger opening exercise, again, work up progressively, do five repetitions to start off with, then do 10, then do 15, then do two sets. So think of it as being progressive. The aim is two sets of 15. Doesn't mean to say you have to start off with it. And then we can do thumb extension as well. So I'm gonna wrap my thumb in the band and from here, I'm then gonna come up and back down, up and back down. And again, it's just like strength training for your thumb, essentially. Once I've done that one, I can then do the other one as well, just applying gentle pressure. If you don't have one of these bands, you can use a rubber band as well, or a hair band I've even seen being used. Or if you just wanna work on isometrics, you could bring the thumb up, I'm pushing my thumb up towards the ceiling here and I can actually apply some resistance with my good hand. So I'm pushing down and I can apply as much resistance as I want for all of those exercises that we covered in the mobility section. And that takes us to the end of today's video. Thank you very much for watching. And if you've learned something new or enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe for more free and educational content and like the video so it can help others as well. You've been watching UK Fitness Up, I've been Travis Tarrant, and I'll see you in the next video.